beautiful people. If you did not know, today is my birthday and I am giving you a gift. Uh, you may be seeing this after my birthday, but the gift is still out there. So I wanted to show you real quick how to assemble this Luna Moth brooch. It is indeed a brooch. Uh, if you want to add holes to it and make it a necklace, you can. You can make it smaller for earrings, whatever you decide you want to do. This looks super complex, but it is not that bad. I'm going to be doing a few parts sped up here. Um, it's a few extra steps in the process, and some of these steps are not 100% crucial. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this brooch that does actually glow in the dark and is made of acrylic. Now, of course, unfortunately, this does not necessarily work great in a diode laser. However, I will do another video with this brooch being made out of 16th inch wood. So everybody gets to play with this one. So sit back, relax, and watch me assemble this gorgeous new brooch. So the next one I'm gonna show you is gonna be a little bit different colored, but I think you'll appreciate how pretty it is. This is the um, is it lavender or lilac pearl. Oh, I don't know, I can't uh, cut off on here, but it's eighth inch pearl from um, Cerulean Tides. And I believe it is actually called lavender, not lilac. So, um, but as you can see, I engraved the little veins here. And when you don't um, do anything to it, it's pretty, but it's really hard to see all of the veins. So I'm gonna show you how I went ahead and made those pop out just a little bit extra. All I do is use a little bit of acrylic paint and make sure I got my, my napkin here or my um, towel. Shake that up a little and this is super, super easy. Now on this, if there was gonna be some concern that this would be exposed to water a lot, I would say seal it. And I will be showing you a step where we use UV resin to make this stand out shiny and pretty. However, if you're careful, you don't even have to seal when you backfill things with acrylic um, because it really gets down in there and sticks. So, okay, so as you can see, I just put a little dot of this on and I'm really just gonna kinda work it down in there with my finger so I make sure it gets into all of the little crevices and grooves. Probably put a little too much on here. All right, so now it's all down in all the crevices and grooves. I'm just gonna take an old towel doesn't matter what, as you can see, I wiped it off earlier here. And my goal here is to wipe off the excess. Now you can see there's a little haze on it still. I'm gonna come in and wipe off as much excess as I can. Don't worry, it's acrylic, it's gonna come off your paws real quick and easy. And then I'm just gonna come in with a clean part of my towel and start buffing. Buffing away a bunch of that extra paint. So you can see my acrylic kind of rubbing pretty hard in here. So it really does get down in those grooves. But as you can see, it's really starting to pop off of the off of the acrylic. That's why I put a little schmutz on my table. No worries. No worries at all. A little bit in the hole there. If you're having a hard time getting that cleaned out, you can also use a toothpick, uh, which I will probably do right now. So as you can see, it's really turning out pretty, but there's just a bit of a haze on this. So all I'm gonna do is take another clean part of my towel and very lightly spritz it with some water and then just gently wipe the top off. That's it. Now, if you get down in there too much, you're gonna wipe out that acrylic, but honestly, it's gonna be pretty hard to wipe out the acrylic because you know when you engrave, it's got little lines. It's just millions of little, well, probably thousands of little teeny tiny lines. So it's gonna hold that paint in there really nicely. So to get it out, you would really actually have to scrub pretty hard. Clean up the edges where I got a little paint on the edges and bam, we got ourselves a pretty purple moth. Now, as you can see, this moth is complete without the top wings. I just like to have a little depth. This is um, up to your discretion. You do not have to do this part, but if you want to, it sure is pretty. Okay. Okay, for the next step of the pretty and not necessarily um, needed things, we're gonna heat this acrylic up with this heat gun. I've had this thumbdinger for years since I started selling rubber stamps. I mean, you can pick them up on Amazon, pretty affordable. Don't get the very cheapest ones though because they don't get quite hot enough. Now, as you might guess, this part of the project can be a little bit dangerous. So if you're doing this with small children, get them the heck away from here or you're a klutz like me, please be freaking careful. 
Um, cause it can burn and hot acrylic is, well, hot freaking acrylic. So all I'm going to do is bring this over to the edge of my table here <clears throat> and turn it over and heat the back side, Ooh, a little dirty from earlier. And I'm just going to use this like a hairdryer and hold it here. Sorry. I'll speed this up in a second. Um, then we're going to heat this guy up and then I'm going to bend it over the edge of the table. I'm going to do both sides so you can see what I'm doing. All right. I'll be back to normal speed in a few. Now, as you can see, we have a little more depth and interest just by heating it up and bending it. Oops, got a little bit of mess down there. I'm gonna get my, wipe this off before we move on to the next step. Again, a little bit of water. There we go. <clears throat> so this is already really pretty, but I'm gonna go even further because it's me and I'm Snark Heart and I'm a little bit crazy. So, a lot bit crazy, sorry, I said that wrong. So um, I'm going to take my all craft glue from Cerulean Tides. All of my supplies today, by the way, are from Cerulean Tides. Um, so I'll use a little bit of all craft and a little bit of this glue goes a long ways. But I'm also gonna wanna make sure that this is well adhered before I move on to the resin step. So while this is curing, we'll, move, we'll do the very backer and then we'll move on to the resin step. So just a little dot. I'm going to come in. I'm actually going to do this upside down so I can see where it is in relation to the head of the moth. And then just hold this in place for 10 seconds or so. And then we will set this aside and let it cure really well um, before we really start going crazy with the background and, and putting the resin on this. So part of the reason I do want to use resin on this is to give this some extra stability to really hold these wings on. If you aren't gonna bend the wings, you don't necessarily need to do resin, but if you do bend the wings, you probably wanna use some because it's gonna give you some extra oomph in really holding these together um, because this could get to be a little bit delicate. But as you can see here, it's got, maybe you can see that, hopefully you can. It's got kind of an, an actual bond between the two of them. Give it some real thickness and beauty. So, um, and I didn't actually do this for protection. I literally just did this for some extra thickness and shininess. So, okay, we'll set this aside for the moment and talk about the way the backer goes together. <clears throat> so, I used from Cerulean Tides, their 16th inch iridescent, and I engraved it because I knew cutting those antennae out was gonna be way, 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 way too delicate. So I engraved this, but I engraved it on the back piece, which it, it's back front, it doesn't really matter because they are, um, it, it's two-sided with this 16th inch. So, but what I'm gonna do, Got a little schmutz on the inside there. What I'm going to do is when I adhere this down, I'm going to adhere it with the engraved side down so you've got some depth and then schmutz and things doesn't get stuck in it. And then to the back side, my back side is actually glow in the dark acrylic. You could do this with white, you could do this with a color. Um, because I'm essentially a fifth grader at heart, I did glow in the dark. And yes, there are holes in the back of this and we will get to why those exist in a few moments here. So. <clears throat> when I am gluing this, I'm going to be really careful to make sure I'm only gluing where my moth body is going to be um, because even though All Craft doesn't show on clear, it did kind of show a little bit when I put it with the iridescent. So, so when I do this, I'm going to try and be, able, be real cognizant of where I'm putting my glue. And in actuality, I'm actually going to use a little bit of jewelry glue just because I know myself and I'm a disaster. So um, I'll put a little bit here where the body would be. And then we'll put a little bit where the wings are going to be. Now, again, I know that these holes could be a little bit concerning for people, but you are going to just love what happens when you see what happens with these holes. So this is going to be the most secure way that you can attach a brooch and it's going to stay right side up. Okay, so give that a little smush. 
Ah, curses. I got a little bit too much by my antenna, but I don't think that's really going to stand out to people. And if it does, well, I won't give this to someone. I'll just keep it for myself. So, okay. <clears throat> so now, when it comes to attaching my hardware for this, I've devised a system that is really secure and is, it just works really, really darn good. Oops, dropped one of these. So I buy these tie tacks from Amazon. And what I'm going to do, first of all, <clears throat> I made these little kind of, I don't know what you would call them, round little buttons. So what I did is I did a 15 millimeter circle and then the, a circle the same size as my tie tack part here. Um, and then I cut a hole the size of the post of the tie tack. And one thing I have to do though, when I get these, they have this little bump that sticks up so it would keep your tie tack from getting flipped over if you were actually wearing it with a tie. So I just take my little micro needles and snip that off on both of these or else it sticks up and causes trouble. So there it is. Sometimes it could be hard to, be, <laughs> hard to see, especially when you have old lady eyes like I do. My 49 year old eyes. Are you guys ready for the 49% off sale? It's gonna be a humdinger, let me tell you. All right, and using my unmasking tool, I'm gonna take and unmask this side. Now this is where the magic happens. I'll show you how this would work. So because I have engraved this, I engraved it two or three times so it's deeper, I, my little head fits down in here. So then when I glue all of this down, it's going to keep my post in here like that. And when I have two of them, then my brooch doesn't get turned all wonky. So we're just gonna take and put a little bit of glue. I'm gonna actually go back to all craft here. <clears throat> put a little dot on this side, just to make sure it's on my metal piece. And then some dots here on the inside. And do the other, because that'll stay give me some open time there. Put that lid back on because you know how life goes. And there it goes right down in the center. So this will keep your post up nice and neat and it will keep it from slipping over. And you don't have to worry about, you know, did my, um, do I have to screw in a little backer? Whatever the case may be, it just I'm pretty proud of my little system. I'm not even gonna lie. So these um, these little brads will be also included with the file. So, okay, so right down in the center again. And a little, I shouldn't have put my lid on quite so fast, but you know, it's all good. Little squish of glue here. Now this I used on this one I used 16th inch white acrylic for the brads and I literally I make you know a hundred of these up at a time so I always have them on hand. I tend to make a lot of brooches. I love to make custom jewelry for myself so I always use these guys. And then once that is that acrylic or that all craft is fully cured, I will just unmask that last little bit. So and then get your tie tack hardware. So yeah, your posts of your tie tacks are going to be a tad shorter. They'll be like a 16th of an inch shorter, but it's going to be so secure that I've never had any issues with this. So I'm just going to set this aside and let this cure. Okay, now comes the super fun, cool part. This is UV resin. You can pick it up real inexpensive on Amazon. And then I picked up a little UV lamp. This is for curing fingernails. I love this guy, it's like $27. It has a top lamp and a bottom lamp. Wake that up. Um, it has been great. And then as you can see, I just glued or taped down a little piece of plastic. So if I get resin on this board, I can just peel it up and throw that away. So first off, I'm gonna just, I actually make this right inside of this so I don't have to try and move it around and get, possibly get resin everywhere. So using this little tip, you don't wanna work super duper thick. You wanna kinda of work in layers as much as you can. So I'm gonna come in here and put a little layer in that will adhere my wings together. Do the top as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cure this. I'm gonna 
takes about 90 seconds. So I will be back with you all in a few minutes. I just pressed the little button. Okay, and we're back. So now I'm just gonna go in and carefully apply my resin around the edges. Now, the neat thing about resin is it's very thick. It has a real thick viscosity. So it, it kind of wants to stay where you put it. It doesn't necessarily wanna go down into that hole that I cut. Um, if you don't want to cut those holes, also you don't have to. But so I'm just going to kind of dab it in here where I want it to be, just kind of dragging it a little bit. It's kind of hard to explain. I hope you can see what's going on there. Um, but if I get it down in the hole, I'm not going to worry too much because I've got my little plastic piece there. And then I'm going to use the end of a toothpick to make sure it really got spread around where I want it to be. Just kind of carefully dragging it to the edge a little bit, but not really going over the edge. Because once you've encouraged it to go over the edge, then it wants to follow all the others. I don't know if you remember like the water demonstration in, um, oh, what was it? In Jurassic Park, but it's kind of the same thing. It wants to follow itself. So I'm going to go ahead and cure this again. If you see a little bubble, you can just use your toothpick to pop that. So I'm going to go ahead and cure that again, and we'll be back. Okay, repeating the process or continuing the process, I'm just going to take and turn this. Um, let's see. That got a little bit adhered there. I'm not too worried about it, though. Um, I'm going to take and turn this so I'm getting the this side easily seen. I'm not even going to worry about getting resin on the underside of the wings where it's sticking up. It's just not going to be really an issue. Okay, so even though these are bent... If we just work carefully and somewhat quickly, it's not even going to be an issue with this running all over the place. I'm going to do one wing at a time, or one um, side of the wing at a time. Oops, looks like I have a little bit of my masking there I need to pick up. Um, but then it won't all run towards the center, so. Spreading that with the tip a little bit, and then my toothpick. Okay, I'll give it another 90 seconds, be back. All right, I'm back with this last wing. Oops, I just touched my tip that I didn't cover. Um, my mistake. Okay, so again, just coming in and kind of gently spreading that with the tip. You don't want to store this stuff in a light place, even though it is in a dark colored um, bottle, it still can go bad. Um, err on the side of buying a smaller bottle first. You can always buy more. But if you decide you don't love this, um, then you're not stuck with a whole bunch of it. So it kind of tends to get thicker as it gets older. Okay. So making sure, kind of looking from the side. Okay, it looks like I've got a nice coverage there. And one last cure. Okay, here we are, guys. After the final cure, it is shiny and thick and pretty. Again, totally optional. You don't have to buy UV resin for this. It just makes it look a little more shiny, pretty. Um, and then finally, all I would do is glue this down right over the whole schlemiel. Isn't that so pretty? I have to say, I think I even like the purple better than the green one, than the initial. So... Thanks so much for coming, guys. Um, if you get a chance, please like and share. And check out the Snark Club Patreon and any other Snark, pro Snark Heart products. Have a wonderful day and take care. Thanks, guys.